Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Galvin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already subscribed though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now, hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really happen though that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, nurses, let's jump into the video. Hi everybody, how are you guys doing? Isang panibagong um, week nga ng nursing discussion ng ale ko sa inyo for today. And this is going to be our another entry sa ating nursing test banking uh, playlist where I created possible board exam type of questions and possible NCLEX questions, per metrics exam type of questions na maaari mo ma-encounter na posible lumabas ngayong darating na examination day. Now, this is maternal and child uh, nursing, your practice exam. Now, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test banking videos that I created na marami doon, nag-viral at talaga namang maraming lumabas na itong mga nakaraang board exam, panoorin mo siya. I'll be putting the link on the description box including or together with the other nursing uh, educational videos I created and whenever the icon bottom pops out, you check the one out because I'll be putting it there together with some of my playlists in nursing education. Now, I would just would like to grab this opportunity because I just check in now. We're almost 17,000 subscribers. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga newcomers natin dyan, sa mga bagong salta. Welcome to Team Galve and welcome to my channel. I hope you find our lecture materials helpful and um, you know, helpful with your studies. And kung hindi mo pa na, kung hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe sa channel ko, mag-subscribe ka na and hit that notification bell para updated ka every time I upload my videos. You don't want to miss that one out. Also, follow me on all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave except for my TikTok account, which is Neil Gave Official. I do have a Facebook page. It's Neil Gave. I'll be posting the same video there. You can also... Um, share my videos on my Facebook or on your Facebook because I'll be putting it there and I would also like to connect with you. Let me know what you think. Comment down. Tag me in your posts. Also, I do have a Spotify account. It's called 3AM or Spotify now, a podcast channel. It's called 3AM Conversation with Neil Gabe. I would really appreciate if you would support me there, give my podcast a rating, and follow, download, and share it to your social media platforms. It's really great. Uh, it's, it's an amazing podcast channel we talk about. Uh, so we talk about um, certain topics that is related to, you know, shame, guilt, uh, what else? Uh, uh, finding your purpose in life. So if you're interested in that, uh, check it out for me. All right. So hindi ko na patatagalin pa kasi medyo mahaba itong discussion na ito. Let me proceed to the actual video discussion. Let me share to you the objectives for today's lecture. So... I'll provide and discuss to you board exam type of questions. And then I will be giving you per, uh, rationalization for each board exam type of questions. Now, this is going to be um, your practice exam for MCN. Ito na tayo. Let me share to you the instructions for today's examination. So you'll be given 10 board exam type of questions. I'll be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have five seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. You choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck, nurses. Ngayon gusto ko lang mag-apologize sa medyo ngongo po ako. I don't know. I just had this re allergic rhinitis. Huh? But anyways, gala-gala. Ito na talaga tayo. Magsisimula na tayo for our very first question of the day. Before that, let me just make sure that I let you know that whatever your score is, put it Put it, uh, put them down in the comment section below, because I would like to evaluate the scores of my student. No shame, no shame. Pinaghirapan mo yan. Like I said, 
the main intention why we're doing this such vi uh this videos such videos like this is because I want you to have the full grasp of the rationalization para pagdating ng actual board exam pagbalik-balik tarin ng tanong bagu-baguhin ng structure ang choices you know exactly why is that the right answer because you know the rationalization and this is only one and also one good way for you to manage or to practice the stra uh, strategy how to attack and how to approach certain questions in the board exam or not just in the board exam but in NCLEX, Prometrics, DHA, those things because I will be sharing to you uh, my knowledge and my strategy as we go along with this lecture, okay? So proceed na tayo. First question, when assessing the adequacy of sperm for conception to occur, which of the following is the most useful criterion? Tinatanong ka, ito, ganito mo siya tatanong. Mag-underline ka pagdating ng board, ha? Underline mo yung mga key terms. Ang tanong, adequacy of sperm for conception. Sperm count, okay? Alin daw dito is the most accurate or useful criteria? Is it A, sperm count? Is it B, sperm motility? Is it C, sperm maturity? Or D, semen volume? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. What is your answer? Very good letter B, sperm motility. Let me tell, uh, let me share to you the rationale. Listen. Letter B nga po ang tamang answer. Why? Although all of the factors listed are important, sperm motility is the most significant criterion when assessing male infertility. Sperm count, sperm maturity, and semen volume are all significant but they are not as significant sperm or significant as sperm motility. Hence, the answer is letter B. Proceed na tayo. Board exam time for question number two. A couple who wants to conceive but has been unsuccessful during the last two years has undergone many diagnostic procedures. When discussing the maturity or the situation with a nurse, one partner states, we know several friends in our age group and all of them have their own child already. Why can't we have one? Which of the following would be the most? Here's the question. Most pertinent nursing diagnosis for the couple. Tinatanong ka ng nursing diagnosis sa pasyente mo based sa nanda. Kung ganito ang statement ng pasyente mo. Pasahin ko sa iyo ulit yung statement ng pasyente mo ha. We know several friends in our age group and all of them have their own child already. Why can't we have one? Ano ang nursing diagnosis mo? Kapag ganito ang statement ng pasyente mo, that's a question. Is it A, fear related to unknown? Is it anxiety? Could be. Is it B, pain related to numerous procedures? C, ineffective family coping related to infertility? Is it D, self-esteem disturbance related to infertility? What is the scenario in this question? We're talking about infertility. Unable to conceive for two years despite all the procedures they've done. So try to consider that one. I'll give you five seconds and it starts right now. Time is up. What is your answer? Very good. Letter D. Self-esteem disturbance related to infertility. Here's why. Based on the partner's statement, the couple is verbalizing feelings of inadequacy and negative feelings about themselves and their capabilities. Thus, the nursing diagnosis of self-esteem disturbance is most appropriate. Fear, pain, and ineffective uh, family coping also may be present but as secondary nursing diagnosis. That means all of these could be present in the couple. Could be the diagnosis, but that's secondary diagnosis. The primary is self-esteem disturbance related to infertility. Next question, number three. Which of the following urinary symptoms does the pregnant woman most frequently experience during the first try? First trimester ng pagbubuntis, ano ang kadalasang na-experience ng isang buntis? That is the question. Is it A, dysuria? Is it B, frequency? Is it C, incontinence? Is it D, burning? Your five seconds starts now.
Okay, time is up. What is your answer? Letter B, frequency. Kung medyo mabilis yung 5 seconds para sa'yo, pwede mo namang i-pause. Tapos, pag-isipan mo yung tanong, mag-extend ka hanggang 10 seconds. But I really want to practice uh, you guys on how to think quickly and spot on the, uh, you know, the key terms right away as you read along the question. Alright? So the answer is B, why? Pressure and irritation of the bladder by the growing uterus during the first trimester is responsible for causing urinary frequency. Meaning, panay-panay na pag dysuria, incontinence, and burning are symptoms associated with urinary tract infection. UTI ang dysuria, UTI ang incontinence, and UTI ang burning. Those are symptoms of UTI. Frequency is much more related to um, uh, symptoms experienced during first trimester of pregnancy. All right. Next question number four: Heartburn and flatulence, common in the second trimester, are most likely the result of which of the following? Tinatanong ka sa second trimester ng pagbubuntis ang heartburn and flatulence is caused by what? That is the question. Is it A, increased plasma HCG levels? Is it B, decreased intestinal motility? Is it C, decreased gastric acidity? Or D, elevated estrogen levels? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up. Uh, now, kapag ganito ang tanong, let me tell you how to approach this one. Ano ba yung symptoms mo? Heartburn and flatulence. Saan ba ito kadalasang nakikita? GI. Di ba GI problem ito? G gastrointestinal tract. Alin sa mga choices na ito ang may kinalaman sa GI or talks about or some somehow related to GI? Yes, number B. Ah, number B. Letter B or intestinal motility is related to GI. Concept. C. Decreased gastric acidity. That's also related to GI. A and B is not more likely talks about GI tract. Or GI system. Right? So, mamimili ka na lang between B and C. What is your answer? Letter C. Gastric acidity. Ang gastric acidity can cause heartburn. Pak. Intestinal motility. That, that decreased uh, intestinal motility. Sinabi ba dyan ng constipation? Hindi naman. Hindi ba? So, the answer is letter C. Why? During the second trimester, the reduction in gastric acidity in conjunction with pressure from the growing uterus and smooth muscle relaxation can cause heartburn and flatulence. HCG levels increase in the first, not the second trimester. Decreased intestinal motility would most likely be the cause of constipation and bloating. Estrogen levels decrease in the secondary or second trimester. Proceed na tayo. Nakakalahati na tayo, ha? Kamusta yung mga scores nyo? Galaw-galaw, hinga-hinga. Kaya mo to. Let me read to you the question. On which of the following areas would the nurse expect to observe cloasma? Pamilyar ba kayo sa concept ng cloasma? Cloasma is a skin disorder which happens during pregnancy. Kung hindi mo alam ang cloasma, try to answer this question. I'll give you the, the definition later on. Is it A, tinatanong ka, saan mo daw makikita yung cloasma sa isang buntis? Is it A, breast, areola, and nipples? B, chest, neck, arms, and legs? C, abdomen, breast, and thighs? Or D, cheeks, forehead, and nose? The picture will kind of like give you an idea where it is because... I try to cater to those visual learners as well. All right, use it for your advantage. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. What is your answer? The answer is letter D. Very good. Cheeks, forehead, and nose. Cloasma, also called the mask of preg uh, pregnancy, is an irregular hyperpigmentation area found on the face. It is not seen on the breast, areola, nipples, cheek, uh, chest, neck, mass, uh, neck, arms, legs, abdomen, or thighs. Saan yun nakikita? Sa face. Alright, so before you reveal yung ating sixth question, yung pang-anim nating tanong, kung nakaabot ko sa video na to at hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe, bakit naman nakakahiya naman sa iyo? I took my time to do my research and do this visual presentation for all of you guys. Give me some love. Send me a like, share this video to your social media uh, platform and subscribe now. I am really hoping that we will be able to make it to 20k. 
So, oh God, please. Masaya lang na we've been really, really growing, you know, as the years goes by. So, maraming maraming salamat po for that. Let me read to you the question number six. A pregnant client states that she waddles when she walks. The nurse's explanation is based on which of the following as the cause. Ano daw cause ng waddling walking or type of walking sa isang babaeng buntis? That's the question. Pinaikot-ikot ka lang ng tanong pero kang papayak. Is it A, the large size of the newborn? Is it B, pressure on pelvic muscle? Muscles. Is it C, relaxation of pelvic joints or D, excessive weight gain? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. I don't understand why my eyes are burning. The answer to this question is letter C, relaxation of pelvic joints. Let me give you the rationale. During pregnancy, hormonal changes cause relaxation of the pelvic joints, resulting in typical waddling gaits. O yung tipo ng paglalakad. Changes in posture are related to the growing fetus. Pressure on the surrounding muscle causing discomfort is due to the growing uterus. Weight gain has no effect on gait. Period. Next, question number seven. Which of the following represents the average amount of weight gain during pregnancy? Very, very, ano, very direct to the point. Tinatanong ka, approximation ng weight gain during pregnancy. Range ng normal Normal weight gain. Is it A, 12 to 22 pounds? Is it B, 15 to 25 pounds? Is it C, 24 to 30 pounds? Or D, 25 to 40 pounds? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up. What is your answer, nurses? The answer is letter C. Very good. 24 to 30 pounds. Pounds. The average amount of weight gain during pregnancy is 24 to 30 pounds. This weight gain consists of the following. Lista. Fetus, 7.5 pounds. Placenta and membrane, 1.5 pound. Amniotic fluid, 2 pounds. Uterus, um, uterus is 2.5 pounds. Breast is 3 pounds. And increased blood volume, 2 to 4 pounds. Extravascular fluid and uh, and fat is 4 to 9 pounds. A gain of 12 to 22 pounds is insufficient, whereas weight gain of 15 to 25 pounds is marginal. A weight gain of 25 to 40 pounds is considered excessive. Hence, kapag pinagsama-sama mo yung summation ng mga pinagsasabi kong value about sa fetus, placenta membrane, sa breast, sa blood volume, extravascular fluid, fat, and all, the total is 24 to 40, uh, 24 to 30 pounds. Malino ba yon? Malino. Next, question number 8. When talking with a pregnant client who is experiencing aching swollen leg veins, the nurse would explain that this is most probably or this is most probably the result of which of the following. Tinatanong ka. Ito, ganito mo siya i-reconstruct yung tanong para mas lalo mo siya maintindihan. Ano ang cause ng swollen leg veins sa isang buntis na nanay? Syempre, alam nga naman tatay. Char. Is it A, thrombophlebitis? Is it B, pregnancy-induced hypertension? Is it C, pressure on blood vessels? Uh, pressure on blood vessels from enlarging uterus. Or D, the force of gravity pulling down on the uterus. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. What is the answer? The answer to this one is letter C. Very good. Sa mga nakatama dyan, very good. Sa mga hindi naman, makinig, ito ang tamang sagot. C. Pressure on blood vessels from the enlarging uterus. Why? Now, a pressure or pressure of the growing uterus on blood vessels result in an increased risk for venous stasis in the lower extremities. Subsequently, edema and varicose vein in, uh, formation may occur. Thrombophlebitis is an inflammation of the veins due to thrombus formation. 
pregnancy-induced hypertension is not associated with these symptoms. Gravity plays only a minor role with these symptoms. Hence, the answer is letter C. Proceed na tayo. Last two questions. Make this one count. Ito na. Board exams have question number nine. Cervical softening and uterine suffle are classified as which of the following? Tinatanong ka, ano sa isang taong buntis o sa isang mother na buntis ang ibig sabihin ng cervical softening and uterine suffle? When you see this, or when you see the symptoms to a pregnant lady, what is the classification or what does it tell you? Is it a diagnostic sign? Is it a presumptive sign? Is it a probable sign or D, a positive sign? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, nurses. What is your answer? Letter C, probable signs. Why? Cervical softening or tinatawag natin, come on nurses, godel sign. And uterine suffle are two probable signs of pregnancy. Probable signs are objective findings that strongly suggest pregnancy. Other probable signs include Heger sign, which is softening of the lower uterine segment. Pisca uh, uh, what, what you must say this? What you must call this pisca sex sign, which is enlargement and softening of the uterus. Serum laboratory tests, changes in skin pigmentation, and ultrasonic evidence of gestational sac. Presumptive signs are subjective signs and include amenorrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Urinary frequency, breast tenderness, and changes. Excessive fatigue, uterine enlargement, and quickening. Hence, tinatawag mo or yung cervical softening and uterine suffle or tinatawag natin gadol sign is part of your Probable sign, meaning mataas ang probability na buntis si mother. Confirmatory ng pagbubuntis is ultrasound. Right, kailangan meron ka dyan, gestational sac. Alright, last question na to. Make this one count. Which of the following would the nurse identify as presumptive sign of pregnancy? Kung nakinig ka sa rationalization ng question number 9, masasagot mo ito. Alright? So, alin daw dito ang presumptive sign of pregnancy? Very direct forward. Is it a Heger sign? Is it B, nausea and vomiting? Is it B, skin pigmentation changes? Is it D, positive serum pregnancy test? Your five seconds starts now. Presumptive, nag ka pa lang. Okay, Doc. Time is up. What is your answer? Hagay ng sinabi ko dun sa rationalization sa number 9. Presumptive sign includes nausea and vomiting. Very good. Presumptive signs of pregnancy are subjective signs. Of the signs listed, only nausea and vomiting are presumptive signs. Hagar signs, skin pigmentation, changes, and positive serum pregnancy tests are considered probable signs or probably signs, which are strongly suggestive of pregnancy. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you learned something from this video lecture. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan nyo nga po yung upload natin this coming Wednesday because it's going to be fun. And if you... Tol uh, if you hindi mo pa nga, kung hindi pa nga kayo nagsasubscribe sa channel ko, please subscribe and hit the notification bell para lagi kang updated sa mga uploads ko. And share mo na to sa lahat ng mga test takers, sa mga kabaro nating nursing jan, sa mga nursing students, sa mga nursing professionals na they want to refresh because I definitely believe that this is going to be helpful with your studies. Tulungan nyo na nga po ako ay pang malita nyo na sa Radyong Sira, ang pinakabago, pinakafresh at ang pinakalibring nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again on Wednesday. You have a good one.